Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In today's video, we'll be looking at a Polistes metricus, or a metricus paper wasp, that was relocated into captivity along with her nest exactly a month ago on May 21st, 2022. Today is June 21st, 2022. So here at the 30-day mark, you'll get to see exactly what the nest looks like after a month in captivity. It still seems to be thriving. The larva have grown really well in captivity. The female metricus foundress who started this nest seems healthy and has adapted well to captivity. We've been feeding her pretty regularly, mostly mealworms. Occasionally she'll get a snack like a spider or a fly that we catch. In this first clip, you're going to see her malixating a little black fly that was just caught in the office here. And she will work on that for a little while until she's got it ready to feed to her larva. Later in the video, you'll see her working on a mealworm. She'll malixate the mealworm and then feed that pulp to her larva. One of the main purposes of this video is to show you what the larvae actually look like when they feed, what they do with their bodies, what they do with their mouths while they're actually eating the pulp that the foundress or the queen shares with them through trophallaxis, which is the mouth-to-mouth -mouth feeding technique that you'll see them use all the way through their larval stage. And later into their adult life, actually, they'll often do adult-to-adult -adult trophallaxis to share food and liquid as well. So here she's getting about ready to finish up with her own malixation of this fly meat. And she's turned it into a pulp that she thinks now will work for the larva. And she begins to deposit some into the mouths of the various larvae that she wants to feed. So keep your eye on this larva first. This larva gets to eat first tonight and she eats a giant chunk of food with no trouble at all. They're kind of all mouth at this age, so it always cracks me up to watch them eat because there's these huge chunks of food dropped off sometimes and they just gulp it down with no trouble at all. Then she moves over to the one on the left. Same thing there. A little less volume in the food dropped on that one, but it also just gulps it with no issue whatsoever. So you can start to realize how much work it would be to feed a whole nest full of these little guys when they're all able to eat that much food that fast all the time. Here we've given the foundress or queen a mealworm to work on. The mealworms come from a pet shop and we use them uh, to stand in for the natural prey of these wasps, which typically would be soft-bodied caterpillars and insects out in the wild. But while they're in captivity, mealworms stand in pretty well for that. So we're going to show you some close-up imagery of the malaxation process here. So you can see how that gets done and how she turns this mealworm into pulp to feed her larva and how efficiently she does that. She actually worked on this piece of mealworm for probably 25, almost 30 minutes before it was malixated enough to feed to the larva. So what we're going to do is speed this clip up so you can watch the whole process in just a few seconds. Wasps will take whatever large insect they have and they will cut it into pieces that they can manage easier while they're doing the malaxation process. So here she works and works on this piece and eventually she decides to go ahead and cut it and you'll see a piece of it drop away here in a second. The rest she malaxates into a fine pulp to feed the larva. We found that while we were hand feeding the wasps in captivity, they much prefer smaller pieces of insect if you feed them the whole mealworm, for example, they might first of all think it's a threat and try to fight it, <laughs> but then once they figure out it's food, it, it takes them quite a bit longer to cut the whole thing up. So we now have been starting to give them smaller pieces at a time, and that appears to allow them to work a little more efficiently while they do the malaxation process, which is what we see here. Here we switch back to real speed. And she finishes up and she's ready to go start feeding some of this to the larva in the nest. Once she gets to the nest, you'll see she always does a little bit more malixating uh, just before she feeds it to them. So here you can see the behavior of the larva. When they know food is close, they start to get more active and uh, stretch out toward the food. And you'll see them start to produce the fluids that the adult wasp will often drink from the larva when they're doing trophallaxis. All of this is part of the feeding process. So as she finishes up here, you can notice in the nest there's still eggs. And there's also some younger larvae up toward the top of the nest on the top of the frame. You'll see a smaller version of the larva. This is sort of a mid-stage larva between egg and mature larva. So you almost see the whole life cycle here from egg to small larva to mature larva to adult wasp. 
Here she begins feeding the larva down on the lower left of frame there. And as always, the larva just fully wolfs down a huge chunk of food. That's what they always tend to do, it seems. Meanwhile, as the foundress works on malixating more of that meat, you can see the others start to move around in their cell and rotate and move their mouth parts. And it's very similar to feeding baby birds, as we've said in other videos, because they act the same way. They want to make as much noise, so to speak, as they can visually and, and through producing fluids that the adult might drink so that they are the ones that receive the food. Instinctually, they, they engage in that behavior as soon as the feeding process begins. We'll speed it up a little bit here while she malixates the rest of that meat and gets it ready for the larva. And at high speed, you can really see the larva and how active they are. And we'll slow it back down here to regular speed. And we'll let her finish up here feeding the last bit of this food to the larva. You'll notice that she carries the food underneath her chin in kind of a ball. And that's the same way they fly with it when they bring it back from the wild after they've malixated something out in the wild and bring it back to the nest. They carry it this way. It's quite easy for them to manipulate in that position. And they can walk or fly or stand or hang upside down with the food right there. So again, one month ago when this nest was found underneath the play structure at a children's community center, it had to be removed for the safety of the kids, so we brought it into captivity to study it. At that time, there were only eggs in this nest. I'm going to superimpose a picture of that nest so you can see exactly what it looked like the day we found it a month ago. It's pretty interesting to see how much happens in one month. One thing I found interesting was that we found it with about a dozen cells in it, and in captivity, it has not grown really. She just maintained it really well, but she hasn't added on to it with extra cells and hasn't laid a whole lot more eggs or anything like that. I expect that will change once this first generation of female workers come out of pupation and emerge as adult wasps. At that point, typically the workers will do most of the foraging runs for food and nectar and water and basic maintenance of the nest, while the queen or the foundress focuses mostly on actually laying eggs. It's always a little tough to get a close-up camera angle while we're in the captivity environment. Trying to wrangle the cameras inside the habitats can be challenging, but hopefully we got enough of it here to give you a good idea of what it looks like when wasp larvae are fed. Basically, it's a bunch of little Jabba the Hutt looking dudes gulping down mass quantities of food. So here she finishes up and starts to clean up, and she'll wrap it up until the next foraging run. Or in captivity, she'll wait until the next hand feeding. And here she drinks some of the liquid that they produce. In exchange for her protein, they provide a very sweet carbohydrate liquid that the adult wasps will drink. And so for her own sustenance, uh, it's very important that she gets some of that after each feeding. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching the changes in a month's time from egg to mature larva. We'll be documenting more progress on this nest as well as some others we have uploaded on our channel. So stay tuned and have a good one.